So sales is the variable to which our analysis is most sensitive. And what does that mean practically? Well, what it means is that sales is going to be the, the thing that we need to think the most about because it has such a significant impact on whether we decide to take the project or not. Again, look at the net present values in this table. Sales, a, a difference in sales of only $2 million from our, our expected sales of $16 million can mean that we more than quadruple our net present value or that we lose more than a million dollars. So this is a, a really significant predictor of project success. And, and of course it should be, right? Sales is the single most important thing in any running any business that we're selling the product that we're making. Okay, so here's an example of the Excel file. That again, it's posted on As You Learn. Uh, it's just called Chapter 11 Project Analysis Worksheet. It's right there in the folder for all the other Chapter 11 stuff. And what you can see here is the project that we were talking about uh, just a minute ago in the lecture. Uh, so it's a 12-year project. Uh, the cash flows are the same for the whole 12 years, so sales of $16 million. Variable costs that are 81.25% of sales. So you can see the calculated uh, variable costs as a percentage of sales, 81.25% times uh, 16 million. Uh, fixed costs that are $2 million, depreciation, uh, and we are depreciating the fixed asset here of uh, investment, 5.4 million. Notice we're depreciating it on a straight line to zero basis over 12 years. Um, Sales minus all my costs minus depreciation gives me EBIT. EBIT times the tax rate of 40% gives me 220,000. That gives me profit because I don't have any interest expense here. So I have profit of uh, 330,000. Operating cash flow is uh, EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes and uh, is equivalent, uh, and remember this from a previous lecture, it's equivalent to uh, net income plus depreciation if we don't have any interest. Uh, and so that gives me operating cash flow of 780,000. Uh, now, uh, cash flow from assets is operating cash flow minus capital spending minus the change in networking capital. We don't have any, just to keep it simple, I, I didn't build any uh, change in networking capital. Um, and I don't have any intermediate net capital spending. I do have net capital spending in my investment year, uh, but I don't sell the assets back at the end. And I, I don't have any intermediate, which just gives me a really simple cash flow. Um, of $5.4 million invested, $780,000 a year for 12 years um, for my cash flows from assets. So all I want to know for this project is, do my future cash flows, uh, do the present value of those future cash flows outweigh my initial cost? And we see by calculating the net present value that it does. Um, now, uh, sit sensitivity analysis means changing one variable at a time, leaving all the other variables at our expected predictions. So these are our expectation, our expected predictions, that, that our expectation about what's going to happen. This is our best guess. Sensitivity analysis means let's change everything, uh, but let's do it one at a time. Change it from our best guess to different options, either an optimistic case or a pessimistic case. So what I like about Excel is that this makes the process of doing this super easy. We can, we can set our, our values equal to here like we did in the Excel. So I can set my sales equal to here. I can drag that all the way across. And that means when I change my sales to, let's say, a pessimistic outcome, 14 million, it updates all my sales levels. It updates all my variable costs, which are a percentage of sales. Then it updates EBIT, taxes, net income, operating cash flow, finally cash flow from assets, and net present value all automatically. I, I don't have to do any additional work. And, and that's where the power of Excel really comes in. In other words, I just did this net present value uh, and project analysis problem again, and I didn't have to do any more work than just retyping in a number. Notice that I didn't change any of my other assumptions. My fundamental assumptions are the same. I just changed one variable at a time. So if I change sales to a pessimistic, out, pessimistic outcome, MPV is negative. If I change sales to a optimistic outcome, 18 million instead of 16 million, my MPV is that positive value that we saw. Right? If I want to change any of the other variables to see the impact of these other variables, how sensitive MPV is to investment or variable costs or fixed costs, I need to change my sales back to my best guess. 
because sensitivity analysis only changes one variable at a time. So I could see the impact of changing my investment to 5 million. That's a, possi uh, an, um, a possible optimistic outcome. It, my investment is lower. Notice that that changes my depreciation because that's what I'm depreciating, which does slightly change my operating cash flow. And between that, uh, my cash flow from asset change increase and my investment decrease, my MPV does go up, but not nearly as much as a uh, an, an optimistic sales change. Uh, and so sensitivity analysis here is me changing any one of these items uh, one by one, leaving the others at their expected cases uh, to see how the uh, to see the effect uh, on NPV. But what if we want to go a little farther than sales, right? Because, yes, we're going to have to spend a ton of time thinking about and making a prediction for the level of sales that justify it. So we're going to think about supply and demand. We're going to think about price level and how that affects our supply and demand. We're going to think about anything that might affect our sales in terms of significant events uh, that, that might affect the economy and, and how, the, how the project might do uh, in the event of those kinds of things. Um, but really, we will stop, slowly start to recognize that that's not enough. And it's not enough because things that will affect sales will also affect other items on the income statement and balance sheet. In other words, sensitivity analysis is great for pointing out the single biggest uh, or most sensitive uh, items that we've made predictions about in the financial statements. But while it does highlight those items, it doesn't tell me any, a lot of it doesn't give me a lot of practical information about how things might change in the real world. For instance, we can think about say. Uh, why we might go from what our expectation is, sales, 16 million, to the optimistic case of sales, 18 million. Why might that happen? Well, it might happen because it turns out that our marketing actually was really effective and more people found out about our product than we thought were going to happen in the first couple of years, and so we just had better sales than we, than, than we expected. But is that only going to affect sales? Or might that also affect our variable costs? Because maybe the marketing... Uh, being more effective meant that we uh, uh, we actually had higher marketing costs per unit of sales. Uh, or, or maybe having more sales meant that we were going to have higher fixed costs because we needed more employees to build all the extra product that we were going to sell. Uh, or maybe it meant that we have higher interest expense or higher depreciation because we needed more fixed assets and we needed loans to buy those fixed assets. Right? In other words, the case that sales is a more optimistic than our expected prediction but nothing else changes is not a realistic one. What we would expect rather is for different scenarios in the world to occur and those scenarios to affect the business in a major way and to affect more than one individual variable. And likewise on the pessimistic side, maybe it turns out that you know we made some giant mistake and had to do a recall on the product we were selling because uh, it had uh, you know, some kind of carcinogen in the paint or, or something like that. Well, that's not just going to reduce sales. It's also going to have our costs go higher as we have to change the kind of paint and maybe use, you know, maybe we chose this paint because it was cheaper. And of course, cheaper turned out to be worse. Uh, maybe it affects our, our fixed costs. Maybe, maybe it doesn't all have to be negative. Maybe it affects our fixed costs because we have to lay people off so that our fixed costs are lower. Right? We don't really know uh, how all these things are going to change, but we do know that not just sales is going to change in the event of a negative or a positive uh, event or scenario. And so that leads us to this next type of uh, analysis, which is called scenario analysis. Again, finance, not really clever namers. Right? Scenario analysis differs because it allows us to uh, use the power of Excel or some other modeling tool to look at how different scenarios in the world might affect more than one sensitivity. In other words, what happens if our product is just more successful because of marketing? How might that change uh, uh, all of the different variables that we talked about? Sales, interest, depreciation, fixed and variable costs. And how might the changes in all of those things impact my net present value? Right? Now, scenario analysis is, uh, is again, you, we'll, you, there's, we'll, we'll walk through it a short example looking in the Excel file that's posted here. Uh, you can see some examples here where I vary just two items at a time. So vary the investment uh, required with the discount rate, 
uh, very variable percentage cost and the discount rate, uh, sales and the discount rate, fixed cost and the discount rate. You can see a pattern here. Uh, the discount rate might affect all of these different items um, uh, or it might change with scenarios that would affect all of these different items. Uh, and, you know, one of the most common things would be, say, for, for instance, like uh, fixed costs and variable costs varying. Or, of course, we're always going to look at all the different ways that it can affect sales because sales is the most significant item. Uh, and so you can see now that we, in, instead of just having a row of different net present value outcomes, we have a matrix of different net present value outcomes. So let's look at that bottom left one where we look at the effect of sales changes and changes in the discount rate on net present value at the same time. So you can see that we have a range of discount rates. Our expected discount rate is 8%, but we've got a pessimistic case where the, the discount rate is higher, 10%, and an optimistic case where it's lower at 6%. Then we have a range of sales outcomes. So we have our pessimistic, expected, and optimistic, relatively 14 million, 16 million, 18 million, and then a super optimistic case of 18.4 million. Again, these are all made up, so it doesn't really matter. We could run, um, we could make a matrix as big as we wanted with as many potential outcomes as we wanted. And then in the matrix itself is the net present value, given that the value for sales and the value for the discount rate are, are what they are respectively row and column. So you can see highlighted in, in yellow in the center of all four of these matrices is the expected 8% discount rate, 16 million in sales, gives us our expected NPV of 478,000. But if things are better, sales is higher, let's say sales is uh, 18 million, discount rate still 8%, then we see what we uh, back from our sensitivity table, we see the net present value of 2.174 million. So sales is higher, discount rate stays the same, we get a better net present value by almost four times as much, or more than four times as much. Now, what happens if uh, my discount rate, in other words, the rate that I'm going, my, my risk, remember my discount rate is my required rate of return. So this is the risk of my project. Maybe having higher sales comes along with also having higher risk, right? I take more risks to generate more sales. Maybe that's the case, right? So then what we would see is we would have a pessimistic outcome in the discount rate. Our risk would be higher. Instead of 8%, it would be 10%. But our sales is also higher. It's 18 million instead of 16 million. So we drop down into the, the row 10% and the column 18 million. And we see that we still have a positive NPV of 1.4 million. So the effect of higher sales outweighs the, imp the detrimental impact of higher risk of a, a higher discount rate. But it does mean that instead of having 2.174 million net present value, we have an NPV of 1.448 million. So uh, 